Um, as a beekeeper, you get asked a lot of questions and, um, the second most common question is what's up with the bees right after do you get stung? So to answer that, yes, <laughs> I get stung. And, um, the answer to the second question is it's complicated. Um, there's a lot going on with bees. Um, this is a honeybee. She, um, is about a half to three quarter inches long and she lives in a colony with about 50,000 other bees. And of those bees, 85% are female and they are the worker bees and 15% are the male drones and there's one queen and she lays all the eggs for the hive. Now, honeybees are really efficient at pollination, which is why they're important to us. And pollination takes place by the flower attracting the bee to um, with the nectar and the pollen kind of jumps through an electrical charge to the bee and then as the bee travels from bloom to bloom to bloom um, That pollen rubs off on the pistil of the plant and fertilizes it So that's kind of pollination in a nutshell one of the things affecting bees are this this is the varroa destructor mite and um, They're like a giant wood tick to bees. They didn't used to come this far north, but with migratory beekeeping practices They're starting to spread um, so a healthy colony can live and thrive with a few mites in it. Um, but as the mite population builds up, you'll notice deformities in the wings, and it makes the bee more susceptible to viruses, to diseases, um, and it just kind of stresses them out. Um, the next thing that affects bees um, are pesticides. And um, recent research is indicating that Every time a honeybee returns to the hive, she brings back at least six detectable pesticides in her pollen load. Um, and one of the main uh, classes of pesticides are neonicotinoids. And neonicotinoids are a systemic pesticide that are applied to the seed coating or to a drench of the flower, and it protects the whole plant. But when a bee takes that nectar, and um, it's taking a non-lethal dose, but that that builds up over time in the bee and also um, in the hive or in the colony. Um, prior to World War II, there were 4.5 million beehives in the United States. Today, there are fewer than 2 million. One of the things that has really affected um, those numbers is the, la the loss of the family farm. Um, they're losing their habitat. Um, we no longer do cover cropping. We no, no longer rotate our plants. This is what we have. We have hundreds of thousands of acres of uh, monocrops and we use um, we use um, chemical pests or chemicals to replace the nutrients that we're taking from the soil and this is all leading to a flowerless landscape and this flowerless landscape um, is affecting the bees because they're flower feeders they need the the protein that they get from the pollen and the carbohydrates that they get from the nectar and they need a wide variety of blooms, just like we need a wide variety of food. Um, last year was the first time that a major media outlet focused on what would happen if the bees were gone. Obviously, we have no honey, but we also lose about $14 billion in economic impact. Um, and then in addition, and what affects us most, um, what affects us as individuals is that we would lose one in three bites of food. So we lose almost all of our fruits, most of our vegetables, our coffee. And what we don't see are that the eggs, the butter, the meat, the things that uh, those animals are feeding on, because they don't have nutritional fodder, that food becomes less nutritious for us. So how do we change that? We need to change our outlook about bees. We need to teach our kids not to be afraid of bees. Honeybees aren't going to hurt us. They don't want to sting you because they'll die. <laughs> Modern honeybees are, are, are bred to be docile, to be gentle. Um, so we need to start there, just with educating. And not just kids, but everyone. Um, also, we need to get involved. Um, young, old, it doesn't matter. You can become a beekeeper. Um, you can support beekeeping organizations or garden clubs. Read a book, find a mentor, educate yourself. Um, especially about food. What <laughs> what you're putting in your body. Most honey that you find in the supermarket is not real raw honey. It's mixed, it's blended, it's heated, and it looks really pretty on a shelf. And it has really good shelf life, but it's not real food. We need to 
we need to become familiar with our local producers, our local beekeepers, um, our local farmers, and support those people that use sustainable practices and that use um, that don't use chemicals or pesticides on their foods. Um, it's healthier for us, and it's healthier for our communities. Now, there's something else that all of you here can do tonight, um, whether you're a college student in a dorm or whether you live on a 100-acre farm um, or you run Glensheen. You can plant something for bees. You can plant a garden, plant blooms. Um, the more blooms that we have, the more nutritious it is for bees, and everyone here can do that. Um, also, we can explore honey. Honey has a terroir, a taste of place. And honey from one location tastes different, looks different, smells different from the next location. So explore the honey in your area. One awesome way to do that is to host a honey tasting. And a honey tasting is just that. You get a bunch of honey together with great local food, great local beers, and you get friends together and you taste and you see how those, how the foods and how the honeys play off each other and change um, as you eat. And you can share your knowledge about beekeeping um, and what you've learned about bees. And then hopefully, um, by increasing awareness, um, we can start to turn the tide on what is affecting um, these bees and um, make this world better than we found it. Thank you.